Hi, and welcome to The Keys to Therapy. In today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about how to build community as a therapist. So in our profession, we spend a lot of time talking to people, a lot of time. <laughs> um, sometimes like six to eight to more hours a day talking to people. So I think there's this idea sometimes that, you know, we're so social when we are talking to people that, you know, we've kind of reached our max. So once we're done with work, we're out. And for some people, that's true. I know there's days that I finish working and I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna watch TV. Like I, I'll call this person back tomorrow or you know, I'll be social on the weekend. And that's totally fine. But I think what sometimes gets mixed in with that is like as therapists, our profession can be kind of lonely. Like, yeah, we spend a lot of time talking to people every day, but we're not talking about us. We're not processing the stuff that's going on with us. We're not sharing or venting or really getting to let our own thoughts or feelings out. And because this profession is so unique in some ways, I think that it's really helpful to have people within your social supports or building your own community of therapist friends or colleagues that get it. I mean, the work we do is really hard sometimes. And, you know, for example, in private practice, sometimes full time is like 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week. Now, if you were to tell somebody else like, oh yeah, I work full time, I work 20 hours a week, they would be like, full time's 40. But in our profession, when you're say saying it's 20, 25 hours a week, you are engaged, you are talking, you are present. You can't go to the bathroom, you really can't, you know, just check your phone randomly. You can't get up and move around typically. Like when you are working, you are on. And that's actually just counting client hours. It's not counting like all the other like admin or random stuff that we do. So in this, you know, in this field, I feel like there is really a, a sense of community that is, is needed and it's not always provided to you, especially as a new therapist. I think sometimes coming in, you feel maybe like some more imposter syndrome, possibly kind of insecure. You feel like the baby of the group. Um, it's just like a lot to handle. So sometimes people aren't as willing to uh, provide you with that community or include you in their community, or you might not be as willing to say that you need that, but we all do. So I really wanted to have an episode set aside for how to build that community as a therapist, because the stuff we deal with is unique. Sometimes our sense of humor is kind of dark because it has to be with all the stuff that we hear on a daily basis. It's how we cope. You know, sometimes people, you know, you can tell a therapist, gosh, I saw you know, seven people today and they're going to be like, oh God, that's, that's a long day. Where if you were to tell somebody who's not in the field, they might be like, all right, cool. You saw seven people. Like I worked for nine hours. It's like, yeah, but it's different. <laughs> so, you know, this job can be really stressful and there's a really high level of burnout in this field. So having that sense of community within the therapy field can help you feel not as alone, can help you learn from other people and can really possibly even help you like build some confidence and be social with people who get it. And we all need that. So as far as where to find people to add to your circle, to add to that sense of community, one place would be grad school. So if you are a newer therapist and you're just starting out, then make sure you're making some of those connections in school. Find the people who think like you do, who, you know, kind of have similar career goals to what you have, maybe similar values to what you have, people who seem like they're heading in the same direction as you, or even sometimes people who maybe like work in different populations. So there are people to network with or refer to in the future, you know, and there's stuff that you can also learn from people who maybe are different than you. But when it comes to building more of that community, you're at least in the beginning gonna probably feel more comfortable talking to people who in some way are similar to you. So make friends, make connections, talk to everybody in your program if possible. Like really put yourself out there and see who you connect with. It might surprise you. Um, same with professors, you know, like build those connections with them. They've been in the field of it. They may have a level of knowledge or experience that you want to get to. They may have connections to people that they can, you know, potentially get you set up with so that you can connect and, you know, whether it's job offers, whether it's referrals, whether it's just like mentors, something. So stay connected to some of those people as well. Same thing with like your internships or your practicums. 
connect with the people there too if possible. Now I know not every situation is gonna be ideal for that. I didn't really make any connections in my first internship. And my second one was kind of isolating. So I definitely made one really good connection and some acquaintance connections too along the way that I could call on if I had a question about something, you know, somebody who's a case manager that would know way more resources than I ever would. Like you still make those connections. Try not to be like stuck up and only talk to the people with the masters or with the license. Like there's people in every stage. There's gonna be mental health techs that have been doing this as long as you've been alive who know way more than you do. So learn from everybody, connect with everybody and really build that sense of community there as you're just starting out in your career. Another place to potentially build some community is with supervisors. As you're doing your clinical hours or you're working in certain settings, you wanna make sure that you are connecting with those people who have been doing it for a while, who, you know, in supervision especially, if you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with this person, one, like I talked about in another video, make sure that the supervisor is the right fit for you in every way or else it's not gonna be a great experience and you don't wanna start out your career in that way, so make sure they're a great fit. But assuming that they're a great fit or you find one that's a great fit, connect with your supervisor. You know, talk to them about all the things that are necessary for your development as a therapist. Ask them questions. You know, ask them how they got to where they're at, what goals they have, what advice that they have. Really try to learn from them. As that supervisor or supervisee relationship changes as you move on in your career, make sure that you stay connected with the good people. You know, unfortunately there's some bad ones in this field and there's gonna be people you come across that you're like, uh-uh, they're definitely not in my community. Like, that's a no for me. <laughs> and that's okay, but that means you kinda have to double down on the good ones. So make sure you're kind of like collecting the good people as time goes on. Another place to kind of build that community is coworkers. You know, look around at the people you're working with. Who do you find interesting? Who do you feel like has a similar sense of humor? Who has, again, similar goals as you and a similar path? Who can you eat lunch with and really enjoy that time and feel like you're able to disconnect from what you're doing for a little bit? You know, people who maybe have a life outside of their job because some people don't and that's not healthy. So make sure that you are surrounding yourself with the people who are in some way, shape or form doing something, feeling something, seeing something that is where you want to be or where you hope to be. So look towards coworkers. Um, every connection you make, you never know when you're going to call back on those people or when they're going to need to call back on you at some point in their lives. You know, there may be somebody five years from now that you're like, oh gosh, like I haven't really worked that much with this population, but this person knows a lot about it. So let me reach out to them. You wanna be able to have those good connections career-wise, but also personally. Cause like I said, it can be kind of lonely in this field. Another place to build that sense of community as a therapist would be with social media. So social media has its downsides, absolutely. We've all seen and heard the studies on how it's affecting mental health and everything else. But there's also a lot of upsides too. You know, if you're in a more rural area, you are working in an agency or practice that's smaller, social media may be the best way that you can connect with other people. So whether that's like Facebook groups for therapists, watch those though, because some can be kind of toxic. The second you see any of these things I'm about to mention be toxic, get out of there. Like block the toxic people or just leave the community in general because that's not it. But so social media, maybe like following like Instagram accounts or TikToks or stuff that the people are saying things that you're thinking or feeling. So I know for me, when I was thinking of going into private practice, I was like, who can I follow? Like, where can I get some of the knowledge and, and learn from people who are doing the thing I want to do? So I found social media accounts that made sense to me. Um, you know, one of my favorite, is, she's on YouTube, Marie Fain. She does private practice skills. So I watched a bunch of her videos. I looked at her website. I, you know, pulled from the resources that she gave. And that helped me feel like, oh, here's somebody who's doing what I want to do. And they're speaking out on the things that they've learned. And, you know, it felt like a sense of community, even if you don't personally know that individual. And it's the same thing, like I said, with Instagram, you know, find the accounts of the people who work with the populations that you want to work with, who maybe are advocating for therapists. And you're, you're like, that's something I'm not really getting where I'm at at my current job. So seek out what it is that you want. You're not always going to be provided it. 
and I think most people I know I did had this idea that going into grad school like everyone's gonna be really good friends and I'm gonna have this entire support system and you know I'm gonna know all these things and I didn't <laughs> so every place I've gone it's been like okay like I'm starting fresh I need to figure out you know and I'm also a different person in every place I've gone so maybe my needs are different so I'm gonna seek out different people and I'm gonna want different things and I'm gonna be energized in different ways so when it comes to social media that can be a good way if your physical world or what you have presently around you isn't exactly as fulfilling or it's not providing you with that sense of community that you need seek it out somewhere else so that's definitely a way to go about it it's just like i said be cautious of if anything's toxic you know there's a lot of drama in some of the facebook therapy groups so if you start seeing things tending that way delete it don't look at it again. You're trying to recharge. You're trying to build a healthy community. So just make sure the resources and the people you're seeking out are the, actually following that goal. Another place to potentially build community is through networking. Even if you're at an agency, look up local things like local um, meetups for therapists or coffee dates or stuff like that because a lot of places have that. There's even sometimes some virtual meetups across the state so people can connect with people all around, especially if you're doing telehealth in some way. So I feel like if you're not, again, given some of these resources or you want more, look at where there's different therapy meetups and, and stuff and build that community yourself, even if you have to like slowly piecemeal it together. Another place would be kind of along the same lines with networking, but network outside of mental health. So if you work with eating disorders, for example, network with dietitians, nutritionists, like talk to people, prescribers, you know, like talk to people who maybe work within the field, but a, a little bit outside of it. So like they understand and they possibly be like good referral sources and stuff like that. But, you know, find the people yoga studios, like naturopath doctors, like find the people in the places that may give you more of a sense of community, even if it, it's in terms of your own health. So maybe you're burned out with some of the therapy stuff and you need to break from the mental health field altogether. So you go to yoga and that's where you find a, a kind of parallel sense of community. People who are there obviously to work on themselves like mentally and physically, but that's not their job. So there's ways to go about it, but definitely with networking. Um, another place would be like console groups. So a lot of cities have like local content consult groups for say the private practice therapist so I know here in Charlotte there's a few where people meet up and they talk about cases and they ask each other business questions and promote what they're doing and figure out a little bit more about what is going on within the community if you're in and like I said an agency that maybe isn't as supportive or is a, is smaller staffed or maybe you're in private practice a group practice or your own and you really feel like isolated or lonely or you miss being able to have co-workers offices that you just go knock on the door with then and talk to and staff a case or share snacks or whatever then you know find these consult groups out here and if there's not one start your own because if you're feeling that way you can almost guarantee that somebody else somewhere along the way is feeling that same feeling so don't be scared to initiate some of the things or create some of the things that you want but aren't yet present Someone's got to start them, so why not you? Another way to kind of build that sense of community is through conferences or like summits or retreats, some kind of events for therapists because you're going to be kind of bombarded <laughs> by people within that community. So I know I just went to a summit uh, over this past weekend in South Carolina and I didn't actually know anybody there. I talked to some of them online through different things but I didn't I hadn't ever actually met anybody who was going and I just went and I was like well hopefully some of these people are cool <laughs> we'll see what happens and I came away with really good connections and a couple new friends so yes you have to be possibly a little bit more extroverted to put yourself out there like that but I think in a lot of ways if not all the ways it's worth it so it's cool to be around people who are trying to learn more um, who want to have just more things happening in their life and their career and they're pushing to make that happen. Maybe there's a training like EMDR or something that you really want to go to. And so while you're at that training, make those connections. 
while you're at a conference for trauma in your state. Start striking up conversations with people who are sitting at the same table as you, who are in the same line to get the free lunch as you are, you know, while everyone's outside kind of waiting to get back in and get started. Start talking to some people. Ask people, where are you at? What do you do? What's your, you know, work social media? Like, stuff like that, you know, and just see where other people are at. But put yourself in places, even if it's kind of scary or intimidating, <laughs> put yourself in places where there's going to be people, like I said, with similar interests, values, and who just get it. So I think when it comes to this community in particular, like I mentioned earlier, burnout is so high amongst mental health providers in general that like it's obviously proving that there's stuff that we're not getting whether it's support money resources whatever else and i think the more that we all join together and push for you know certain legislation or uh advocacy or things like that we're all gonna be able to benefit from it but you can't really do some of that without that sense of community you can't really provide to your clients in the best way if you're not taking care of yourself so if you can take some extra steps to build a great sense of community and everything I discuss is just community within like the therapy field, like making connections with other therapists, you know, obviously there's going to be other places that you're building in your community, whether it's like friends, family, um, church, hobbies, volunteering, you know, there's so many places that you can build community. So have some stuff in multiple categories. But I think sometimes as therapists, we're not, at least I know I wasn't ever told how important it was to be around people who, who understand, who get it, who you can say like, oh God, I had this intake today and it was so stressful. And somebody's like, oh yeah, I've been there. And they just get it. <laughs> and, you know, as you go further in your career and your goals start expanding and you're narrowing down which populations you want to be in and you're seeing more of what you could be as a therapist or even outside of that as a coach as a business person you know maybe as like a property manager if you're out here buying up properties and that's where you're putting some of your energy there's so many places that you can go within this field but sometimes you don't even know where you can go until you start talking to some people who have been there or who want to go there too then it'll spark some ideas so again there's so many benefits to building a sense of community as a therapist so start building yours today if you don't already have one, go for it. Start the consult group in your area if there's not one. Reach out to somebody from grad school you haven't talked to in a while, but you know that you really liked. So go look at what conferences are happening this year and pick one to go to. You know, take some action steps towards figuring out who your people are on this side of things. And, you know, obviously in some of the other areas, work on that too, because you want to be as well-rounded as possible. But within our community, I think most therapists are feeling the same way. We all want that sense of community for ourselves. So don't be scared to reach out. So, or be scared, but do it anyway. <laughs> and see how it goes. But I hope that this episode was helpful. I know that it's a little different than some of the other ones, but we got to take care of ourselves too. So on top of all the practical things we need to know in this field, this is something that's, that's kind of practical. But it's also very emotional and it's something that we need to be discussing. We need each other. Not, no therapist knows everything or can do it all. So let's rely on each other for the things that we need. Find the people who get us and who get this field because there's a lot that comes with it. So if you want to stay on top of future videos, then subscribe below and you'll see whatever's coming down next. <laughs> but otherwise, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Thank you.